if we love drawing architecture, then drawing grand monumental architecture presents both its own attractions, but also its own special challenges. We need to capture the sense of the size of the grandeur of the structure, but there's usually a lot of architectural decoration repeated on long facades. So we have to get the alignment correct and also the foreshortening. There are often more difficult architectural elements to draw. There are domes, spires, sculptures, and many objects to align, not just horizontally, but also vertically. And all of these things are much more challenging if we're drawing directly in ink. There's no pencil guidelines, there's no erasing. We have to commit with every stroke. In this video, I explain how I map out and draw the architecture grandeur of the magnificent and the enormous Berliner Dom directly in ink. I explain how I keep the proportions and scale under control as my drawing develops in all directions. I hope you find it helpful. Before I started filming, I put my reference photo on the paper, positioned it, centered it where I wanted my drawing to be, and I placed a single pencil dot at the top of that closest corner where I was going to start drawing. That way, hopefully, if I get all my proportions correct, my building will fit on the page and it will be nicely centered. So getting the scale and proportion correct in magnificent grand architecture is very important. We want it to look big and grand and impressive, even though our drawing, of course, will be relatively very small. I usually start in the middle, unless there's an obvious shape somewhere else because that way I move outwards in all directions. And if there are small errors creeping in with each new section I draw, by the time I get to the edge, hopefully it won't be too large. Whereas if I start on one side and draw across, if there's a little error bit by bit, it will be a much greater error by the time it gets to the far side. How much detail I draw will depend on the size of my drawing and also the clarity of my photo. It's important to choose how much to draw carefully. Because if I draw too much, it will make the building look burdened somehow with its decoration, as if it doesn't quite all fit properly and it will take away from the realism. So drawing everything is not always the best option. The other thing I need to do is make sure I get my perspective lines correct. And it was particularly tricky in this drawing because I wasn't drawing long lines of perspective all at once. So I had to make sure that my angles were going to end up where I wanted them to be without actually committing to too much at once. The other thing of course is to be sure where eye level is so that we know where the perspective lines change direction or change the direction of their angle. In this case it's very low to the building. It's in effect at the base of the building although it's not quite. And so it's important as I move each of these sections across going column by column, although they're really pilasters, choosing the width accurately. And this is incredibly important in keeping things in proportion. Most of us have a natural tendency, probably for most people it's to go a bit too wide because we're trying to fit in the detail. We have to make sure that we draw the column where it needs to go and then we squeeze the detail in between the columns. That's the way I do it. If I do the detail first before I do that second column in, I find that I've always gone too far. Now all the time in this I use whatever I've already drawn as, as the measure to work out measurements of the parts I'm about to draw or to align. So particularly where the level is going up or down from what I've drawn, I keep measuring back across in the reference photo firstly and then in my drawing to see okay this corner is level with uh, the middle of this first window that I've drawn for instance. I establish the tree and I reserve spot for it to draw later. I also draw a line just that will indicate where this uh, building on the extreme right will go. I decide to go across the base a bit more because I feel like I need a bit more of the base of the building on the left hand side so I can position the drum of the dome accurately. This is very important because the scale of the dome is probably the most important thing in 
getting the overall sense of size and scale of the building correct. So the drum is the base. Therefore, we really want to make sure that the base is the right width and the right height. So when we put the dome on top, the proportions all look correct. And we get this sense of this massive dome looming over us. I think this dome is actually the second largest dome in Europe after St. Peter's in Rome. So getting the base correct is important. It, we're drawing the sort of detail that will allow us to position the drum correctly. But firstly, there is this corner tower to get in place. I need to draw it first because it will help me position the drum more accurately. It will give me, if you like, more reference points. And I can align this with what I've drawn underneath with vertical alignment and I can work out the height also based on what I've drawn already. This is actually a rear corner tower of the church. We're looking at the rear of the church and one of the sides. The grand entrance is on the far side that we can't see. Vertical alignment is really important with a building such as this. Columns align upwards with each other. The projecting and tablatures that often come out at certain points over the columns line up. Above these protruding and tablatures, we often have statue bases and then statues. And with domes, the dome can be divided into segments that also, the way they come over the top of the dome, align with statues or other architectural details around the base of the dome. So it is important that we learn to be looking to these and seeing the patterns of alignment as we draw. I'm basically drawing across positioning these columns as I go and trying to get the curve of the top of the drum correct. It's important that I curve the top of the drum enough. If I don't, it will have the effect of making the dome look not as high. We are some distance away, but we still have the sense of we're looking up at the dome, we're not looking at it. If I flatten that curve, it will have the effect of making the dome look both further away, but also not as tall. So I really want to get that correct. I also need to make sure at the sides that I curve down enough and that I foreshorten as the drum recedes from view around its edge. Again, not getting that correct will just make it look very awkward. Now I want to center the top of the dome. It's really important to get centering correct with domes. If it's not quite right, it throws the whole drawing out. And now I need to get a sense of how high to put the dome and the curves of each side. I make this mark badly. I realize it's way too tall and I can't hide it all with the lantern, but I have learned a long time ago that it's better to put the line in the correct place. The brain will favor that over any incorrect lines. And particularly when they're not drawn particularly heavily, even though I've got some visible marks that are a bit more visible probably in life, it looks a whole lot better than if I'd made the dome too high because then we would have lost the sense of how large it was, how we can't see the top of it because it just looms up too high. So I have to position these ribs and I do that with the columns that are underneath because they all line up. Now there are two rows of windows that go around the dome and they follow the perspective rules of ellipses and so the straight line of those windows actually curves because we're looking up and the upper row curves more than the one below it because it's higher. I badly mark in a line for the building. I don't get it right. And by the time I correct it, I've got about four lines. And I put in that half tower. Now I start working the detail down the bottom. I would probably normally have gone right across the building and then gone right across the base with the detail if I wasn't recording this. But I'm going to need to fold my photo reference soon. So I thought I'd finish this section. It's really important with the figures that we get the scale correct. There is more flexibility now with what I do, how closely I follow the reference photo or not. But it's important to put some people in and I still want to give the sense of a crowd. I do quite a lot of figures and the difference between the closest figures and the furthest ones in this scene isn't very great, 
but it's still very important to establish scale. So it's important like I capture that correctly and consistently. You can see me measuring details here, angles with my pencil, and there's not a great deal to draw here, but I do have less things to align it with. So it takes actually a bit longer than some more detailed things. I now have this other corner tower to draw. This is the sort of thing where I position it as much drawing the space between the tower and the drum as drawing the tower itself. I see that space as a three-sided shape and I want to make sure I draw that in inverted commas as I position this tower. As it turns out, I'm not happy. The gap's a little bit too large. In life, this tower, corner tower, should be about five mil closer to the right. But this is how we learn. It's always important to look at our drawings afterwards and work out what didn't I quite get right? Because then next time I'm that much more alert to observing more carefully and just waiting a second longer before I put my line in. I finished this front corner tower. Now I know from knowing the building that it's actually larger than the back corner tower because it is along the front of the church. But if I hadn't known this already, I would have to have worked it out through careful observation that in fact it doesn't line up the way it would with the tower I've already drawn as if they are the same size. So I get that complete and once that's done, besides putting the balusters into the balustrade across the top of the drum, there's really just finishing the figures and these trees along the front. I do that again, I pay more attention than normal to scale because it's so important with these figures. And once all of that's done, the final two elements are the trees down the left hand side and the building on the right hand side. And it's really important to work just as hard with these details. I actually line up roughly patterns of the branches on the left hand side with the various elements of the church and I try and copy them and I do the same with the various floor levels of this building on the right. It's all part of the way we keep working at the scale. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. In case you were wondering, that drawing took me about two and a half hours to do if we like drawing architecture, then we're going to be attracted to these sorts of buildings. We have to make a choice as to when it's a good time to challenge a subject which is really difficult. If we do it too early, we can find it a bit confusing and a bit hard to achieve what we have in our mind on paper, and that can be discouraging. And if it were a piano piece and we were just learning the piano, we wouldn't start with a really complex piece. But then equally, we reach a stage where we want to keep pushing ourselves more and more. We don't want to stay in a comfort zone. We're very well practiced in the skill levels we need for a certain type of building, and then we don't go further because it's a bit harder and we may not succeed. So it's getting that balance right of being adventurous and pushing ourselves and not doing things that are so beyond our experience that we're going to be discouraged. If you're ready for the Berliner Dom or similar buildings, then go for it. And you will only improve as you practice them. And if you've got to this point in my video, then please, if you haven't already, subscribe, hit notifications, hit the bell so that you know when I post something. Please leave comments, like, these are all very helpful to me developing and growing my channel. So I'd appreciate that. And whenever you draw, whatever you draw, simple or grand, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.